tell us about who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Sean Watson, and I'm a senior technical writer at ServiceNow. And I've been a technical writer for about five years, and I've just really enjoyed it. It's been a whole lot of fun to do. And, you know, technical writing isn't a position that a lot of people think of as a career, in part because there's a lack of education around the fact that this career does exist. So many people come from different avenues when they become a technical writer. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got your first job in technical writing? Um, I'm exactly one of those people that never even knew that technical writing existed and just kind of stumbled into it. My first technical writing job kind of happened by accident. I was, I graduated from college and was getting ready to go to graduate school and had a little bit of time in between. And so I was networking, networking with some friends and a friend of mine said, Hey, we've got a need to write an operations manual. I was like, I got that. No worries. And so I just started writing the operations manual, which is actually not that easy to do. I learned that like, Hey, I probably actually don't have this. I probably need a little bit more help, but, um, it was a good intro into technical writing and it, I found that I really enjoyed communicating with various different stakeholders to get the information, to be able to then organize the information to uh, complete what was desired out of the task. So it was a good intro for sure. It's awesome. You never know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then in your career, um, can you talk about some tangible steps that you made in order to ensure that your career as a technical writer has progressed? Up until working at ServiceNow where I decided, you know, technical writing is absolutely the direction that I'm going. I actually didn't take any steps to become a technical writer. <laughs> so um, I had worked for various contracted technical writing types of positions until I got to Northrop Grumman and at Northrop Grumman, the um, defense contractor, I kind of found that, hey, there actually is a lot to technical writing. This is a, this is a big skill. This is something that requires a lot of continued learning and something that was really intriguing me. And being that I went to and got my master's degree and had these skills such as researching and organization and writing documents, I was looking for a type of job that I could apply that to. And I knew that I didn't want to get more education, like getting a PhD because this, bills were starting to rack up a little bit. This was getting expensive being in school. And so it's like, I got to figure out some type of way to make things work with the skills that I have. And I found particularly at Northrop Grumman that, hey, I'm researching a lot. And I'm organizing stuff. And so this is fulfilling part of my desire here. But I was always trying to push out to other directions like project management or management of some sort, maybe even product management. But it wasn't until I got to ServiceNow where I discovered that technical writing is actually really cool. There are various different types of technical writing and different skills that are required for each one. But I really like the idea of being kind of my own boss or my own manager over the content that I have. And it's up to me to go to the stakeholders and acquire the information. It's up to me to ensure that all the information is totally accurate. It's up to me to structure it in the best possible way so that it's very clear and it is innovative and high very easily readable. And that's where I kind of got the hook where, hey, I can see myself doing this forevermore <laughs> because this is applying the skills that I was trying to get out of being a researcher with a PhD. But this is something that's probably going to make a little bit more money than I would make as either a professor or as a researcher of some sort. And it's something that I don't require, doesn't require any further education and just something that I really am enjoying doing and really enjoy the atmosphere, particularly of the tech industry that I'm in right now. And you had touched upon this a little bit with communicating to stakeholders, being independent. What are some other skills that you can think of that have really 
helped you and you think are valuable for technical writing professionals? Particularly coming from, which I think that it's a very common thing. I've met several other people that have gotten advanced degrees and they see like that, hey, I don't actually want to go this direction of becoming a professor or a researcher, but I do have the skills of research. But even beyond that, having a keen attention to detail is a very important thing for a technical writer. Being able to spot out little nuances, it's not an easy job to have. And it's one that requires thinking through various different scenarios, being curious enough in order to wonder, well, hey, that is a little bit ambiguous right there. I might need a little bit more information here. I'm curious as to what more what information I can get in order to make that totally clear and to uh, make it even more precise. And I'd imagine, you know, when you go about this process that you have a lot of tools that you use, maybe just a couple and technical writing tools really do vary from everything from knowledge-based software to maybe it's a screen capture tool like Snagit. Do you have some that you use on a regular basis you can talk about? Yeah, for sure. So Snagit is one that I use on a daily basis, just grabbing different screenshots to stick it into um, my documentation. But having worked at various different companies doing uh, technical documentation, I've seen that companies do it in very different ways. At Northrop Grumman, they used ArborText, and at other companies, they use even still Word. But um, the software that I prefer most that I just really think is a lot of fun to work with is Dita. I use Oxygen, which allows for reuse. It allows, allows for metadata. It allows for versioning. And it allows for a lot of innovative ideas. And so in addition to becoming better at making documentation clear, more precise, and building up the substance around it, there's also this really cool opportunity to find new innovations within the software in order to build up really cool architecture within the software and really cool features through the to the um, documentation so that it it's appealing to the eye, it's fun to look at, and it also has a little bit more functionality so to engage the user that's um, using the documentation. And that's awesome. Another, yeah, sorry, another one that I, I wanted to throw in there also is in, a new one that I've just been working with are Miro boards. Mm. Those are totally legit. They're like brainstorming tools and um, it enables you to work, to collaborate with people on a single Miro board and shape different ideas. And that has just been so key to being able to get complex ideas. It's just really a cool piece of software. I'm gonna throw that one in also. Yeah, I've recently tried Miro. I think it's a great tool. So completely agree there. <laughs> Um, one of the things that is often difficult for people who are looking to step into another role is just ensuring that they'll be happy in it. So it's one thing of making a career uh, transition from one role to another, but another thing of, hey, I'm going to make a career transition and I want to be happy in the next role as well, even though it's going to be completely different from the one I have now. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit of what goes into the process of trying to find a technical writing job that you'll be happy at? I've just seen that technical writing jobs are so different from one to the next. Um, and they require different types of skills. I've worked at technical writing in technical writing positions that have required more of an analyzer type of skill, which would be researching a whole lot behind the um, topics that you're writing about, knowing absolutely everything about that, and then finally starting to write. And then there's what I'm doing right now, which is more of a doer type of skill set, where you just kind of start the documentation and go through lots of iterations and learn along the way at, through the agile system of different sprints, how the documentation should be molded. And so 
there's great variability between different types of positions, but for me particularly, I really enjoy agile an agile project management system where I'm able to just get going, where I'm able to take on a lot of stuff at one time and deal with a lot of complexity and kind of shaping things out. And so I would say to somebody that's looking at transitioning over to a technical writing role that um, there probably is the person's skill set, assuming that they enjoy being curious and researching and have an empathy towards how users are going to view the documentation, that there probably is a technical writing job that they would enjoy doing. It's just a matter of what the demand is for that particular company and how they go about creating their technical documentation. Yeah, and I like how you mentioned earlier that it's also about the project management side of things. How a company deals with project management tells a lot about how the company runs, for sure. Um, so ensuring that there is effective project management in place so you're not just thrown in there and be like, there you go, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> So um, a little bit of a broad question, but there, and there's a lot of components to this, is where do you see the future of technical writing going? You have different industries, you have different skill sets and tools. So you know, what are your thoughts there? I think that the biggest concern that I've had with technical writing is, are robots coming for our jobs? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a question that a lot of technical writers have. But um, this is, it's a question that I asked uh, the, one of the vice presidents of our company specifically, like, hey, where's technical writing going? Are our jobs gonna suddenly disappear for AI? And um, I like the answer and I think that it's spot on. I think that there are some technical writing jobs right now that could be done with AI and they're just, not that difficult of technical writing jobs and a computer could probably do those jobs. But I, what this vice president said to me was that AI is not coming for our jobs anytime soon. What AI is going to do is AI is going to work with us so that we can be even more efficient in our writing assignments. And I wondered what that kind of meant. And I've been seeing different signs of that here and there. For example, with Word documents, you start writing out a word at, in new Word document and it'll predict what you're trying to write. And I think even sometimes it'll try to complete the sentence for you. So that is an example right there of AI that is stepping in trying to anticipate what it is that you're trying to write. And we also have different software that's installed into Ox or Oxygen Dita that, um, that gives us a score on the, how well uh, our documentation is written, um, finding out the times that we use passive voice so that we can correct that. And finding not, not even just spelling errors, but also some problems with syntax and some problems with just making things a little bit clearer. And so I think that's a really cool advantage to AI where it's helping to shape the documentation, helping me to become a better writer. And the way that it's been explained is that AI would have to advance significantly, much farther than it is right now to write a lot of the documentation that's demanded and to be able to pass it off with, <laughs> Uh, reviewers and things like that. So it is an issue probably with some technical writing, but it is also a cool thing to be able to write even better technical documentation by having these tools now. Yeah, very interesting. You know, I wonder when, you know, that you sort of have that adoption curve of AI and, you know, when that, when we get to the point in the curve, when <laughs> Yeah, I start start seeing the jobs. Maybe it's like thirty years from now, so we're at the perfect time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it'll happen. But like in the meantime, we're safe. Um, 
So you Just have tech acquiring skills and we'll <laughs> transition <laughs> to something else when that time goes <laughs> and it matches up, right? <laughs> exactly. That's that's what we got to do is always be one step ahead, you know, it's like, we know it's coming. Um, so one of the things that new technical writers face in the workplace and still existing technical writers is these different hurdles. Well, there has to do with like communication, making their job known to their team members. Um, can you explain some of these hurdles and ways to solve them? Sure, absolutely. I think there's three that just right off the top of my head come to mind. There's uh, getting down your process for technical writing, which is going to be different from assignment to assignment or from company to company, depending on the type of project management and depending on whether it's analyzer or doer oriented. But regardless, one of the struggles is getting a system, an organization system, so that you know exactly how to structure your documentation, have a checklist to be able to know that you've accomplished certain tasks and getting into the rhythm of, of your pacing for the technical writing and how the, how the whole process is shaped out so you know that you've gone through a thorough process in order to deliver the de deliverable. And another one, I'm sure we can all kind of relate to this is some companies don't necessarily take technical writing as seriously as others. They don't value it as much. And so that presents a challenge, but also an opportunity to learn about how to acquire skills to either promote technical writing, the value of it, or to be able to work within different types of systems to be able to accomplish the tasks that need to be done, regardless of maybe the support that's there. And the third one is just along the same lines of a lot of times you have engineers that don't necessarily value the technical writing or that think that they can write the, te the technical documentation better than you can. So you also kind of have to sometimes um, make the case for why technical documentation is important, why in establish credibility for why you're a subject matter expert in technical writing and be able to have the skills to say that you're a subject matter expert in technical writing. So there are hurdles there for sure, but they're things that can be worked through and even possibilities and opportunities with each one of those things. Man, I really like that. I think, um, and not a lot of people rephrase the hurdles is um, if you saw them, you know, you potentially creating new opportunities for yourself. And I really appreciate that. Um, one of the things that um, people don't necessarily talk about too much is reasons that uh, if you are interested in getting technical writing, why it may not be a fit. It's not for everyone, right? Um, and then also maybe some key traits that you've seen where you're like, hey, if you have these characteristics, there's a good chance that you may enjoy being a technical writer. So both sides of the coin. Yeah. If you can uh, expand upon both those sides, that'd be great. Sure. I've seen lots of personalities be successful in technical documentation. And I think that the thing that everybody from these different personalities has had in common is that they're curious people and they're also empathetic people. But if you don't have a curiosity towards lots of different things, or if you don't have an empathy towards the reader and towards the stakeholders, then technical writing is probably not the position for you. <laughs> but the technical writers that I really admire and that I see do, do really well in technical writing are research oriented people. They're very driven people. They're people that have a great desire to create very beautifully laid out documentation and very precise documentation and acquire new skills, new tools and innovate along the way to be able to make the documentation as engaging and as masterful as it can be. I see a lot of my coworkers are people that really try to master things. Like I've got coworkers that are very good at the guitar. I've got coworkers that are very good at surfing. I've got coworkers that are very good at particular things. 
in addition to technical writing, because that's their personality. They, they get very down into the weeds on things and really want to convey in simple terms how to do those very complicated things. That makes sense. And, you know, just um, before we end off here, do you have any more advice for people looking to break into technical writing or technical writers who maybe just got their position and they're looking to level up their career? Yeah. Um, so like I said, I didn't intend on being a technical writer. I just found along the way that I really enjoyed being a technical writer. And it's like, hey, I don't actually want to be a project manager anymore because I'm actually managing the project that I'm working on. I'm managing things with stakeholders. And so this is really cool. It's accomplishing everything that I want. It's entrepreneurial and it allows me to be my own boss. But one thing that has helped me to get there has been um, the advantage of some of these contract technical writing positions. And you see that on like Glassdoor or on different job searching websites that it maybe looks a little bit defeating to only be working for a company for like six years or, or sorry, six months or 12 months. But I think that those are really outstanding opportunities to be able to get experience with different companies, with different types of technical documentation, with different project management systems, and to acquire lots of skills from lots of different people that you'd work with through these contract positions. So I just can't understate more how advantageous some of these contract positions are and how they can really build a career. And with my own career, I've just seen that they've allowed me to get to the type of technical writing position that I really actually did want. And start off with somewhere you're working on Word and in franchising or consulting, financial consulting, stuff like that, or even worked in law as kind of a technical writer. And then I wanted to go and try defense. And so I worked for Northrop Grumman and I saw that that's really cool also. And I wanted to, beyond that, break into the tech industry. And I think that the tech industry is where you really have the opportunities to innovate, where technical writing is really valued um, as an essential tool for building a lot of software and documenting a lot of software. And so the ladder to get there is really through a lot of this contract stuff that provides these cool opportunities. Yeah, I kind of agree more. I think such a big part of it is having tangible work experience rather than just more theoretical in whatever way possible, right? It's not, it's not like you get the cherry on top right away. It's like, hey, like be able to show that you can provide great deliverables on time and just start there, right? Absolutely. Um, well, is there any way that students can uh, get in contact with you at all? Uh, sure, they can email me if they'd like to. My email address is seanrwatson at gmail.com. That's S-E-A-N-R-W-A-T-S-O-N at gmail.com. And more than happy to answer any questions or help strategize different approaches to how to get into technical writing positions or how to be successful in different projects that people are working on. I really love to find innovation, innovative ideas. I really love to work with people. So feel free to reach out to me and I'd be very happy to help however I can, absolutely. Well, thank you, Sean, for being here today and doing this interview with us. And thank you to everyone who's watching and we wish you the best on your technical, technical writing career journey. Thank you so much, Josh. Take care.